Support for Higher Education in Focus comes from the Penn State Alumni Association, serving alumni and alma mater for more than 145 years. On the web at alumni.psu.edu. Penn State Bookstore, now in an expanded location in the Hub Robeson Center. Improving the student experience at Penn State with philanthropic support of student causes throughout the university. PSECU, a credit union providing financial services to its members throughout Pennsylvania since 1934. More at PSECU.com. And from viewers like you, thank you. Welcome to Higher Education in Focus. I'm Patty Satalia. If you're looking for a creative fix, look no further. Penn State's College of Arts and Architecture offers hundreds of musical and theater performances, visual arts exhibitions, and related events each year. In this edition of Higher Education in Focus, Penn State President Eric Barron takes a closer look at how people encounter, engage with, and participate in art at Penn State. Here to talk about that with him is Barbara Corner, Dean of the College of Arts and Architecture, Brian Alfred, a Penn State graduate and working artist, and now an assistant professor in Penn State School of Visual Arts, and Natalia Pilato, who is also a working artist and educator. She's currently pursuing her doctorate in art education from Penn State. Now, here's Penn State President Eric Barron. So thank you so much. It's great to have the three of you on this program. You know, why don't we just get started, Bobby? I walk around town and I see arts up and t-shirts and what is it? What, what's the objective? Well, art, arts up is the tagline for arts up is to discover the arts at Penn State. And it's to remind people that we have a bustling arts community here. And it is designed, actually it's a part of our strategic plan in the college to help make the arts and design central to Penn State for people to realize the importance of the arts in our community, both at the university, but as well, uh, including in the local community as well. So we're going to be featuring the programs that we have in the arts district, where all of our most of our buildings are located in the College of Arts and Architecture. But also, we're going to have feature co-curricular activities for students to realize there's something every student can do at Penn State. One of our big goals is for every student to have a meaningful experience in the arts while they're at Penn State, regardless of their major. So. One event, a full day. What? It is from noon to five, or was from noon to five on Sunday, uh, September 20th. And we had events in, in front of the plaza at the Eisenhower, in front of the plaza, in front of the Palmer Museum of Art. And people could go into the buildings. They could have all kinds of different experiences, hmm. play themselves with the arts, do some painting, put on some costumes. Sounds like a lot of fun. So Natalia, I, I want to make sure I get this right. You're co-creator and director of the Community Arts Collective in State College. So you created two community murals. Yes. And you did this for fun. It's a natural place to do your art. Um, or what, what were you thinking? What, what, what was the purpose? Is, or is it part of this community engagement? Yeah, so I grew up here, I'm local to the community, so when I decided I was going to come back here and go back to school and get my master's here, I thought, well, I should bring some of these skills back to my own community, and I had done a community mural in Williamsport, and I had worked with Elodie Geikus, who had done several murals as well, and we said, well, why don't we do one here? It's our town, it's my hometown, and it was very grassroots, it started over dinner bunch of people we said you know what kind of wall can we find what can we do and I was also looking at that kind of work in my own studies mm -hmm. and so I wanted to see how to connect you know the university to the community and also how we build relationships with people through creating art and that really mm -hmm. interests me and I'm still working towards that in my so own we have work. So we've got a theme going here <laughs> in a lot of different <laughs> ways in terms of, of connectivity and, and so Brian I should tell you that when my wife and I were first here. We went and bought a piece of art produced by a grad student. Mm -hmm. Now I understand you organized uh, an exhibit that was really from and of the students? Yeah, I, was, I worked with a gallery downtown called uh, Fraser Street Gallery, and um, the director asked me to curate a show of students' work. So I, over the course of the summer, basically during the summer, I chose a bunch of students, and we put together a show to focus on 
student work in downtown, which is really great because it gives them a venue to work and, and to share their work outside of, you know, just the university and to share with people downtown in the local community. So, and if you say Penn State student art, what would we see? Really diverse, really amazing artwork. That's um, the, the title of the show is called New Directions, and I called it that because the good thing about student work is it's developing. It's in a, it, as it usually continues outside of school, but it's in this state of flux where they're challenging themselves, creating new pieces, mm -hmm. new directions, and that's kind of I think what you see is you see this artwork that's being done in the environment of development and creative process and change. You know. So, you know, maybe any of the three of you could jump in on this, but, you know, here we've got Pittsburgh over here, and we've got Philadelphia over here, and we have State College in the middle. Uh, what is the significance of, of the arts at Penn State for Central Pennsylvania? Well, I think in, what's really important is that we, we do provide that context in Central Pennsylvania. You, you won't find quite the collection of art for instance, in the Palmer Museum of Art, you won't find that any place else between Philadelphia and mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Um, you won't find some of the we, we provide in this community really a professional means for students as they're working. So, for instance, one of the things we say, and it's comparable whether we're using it in the performing arts or the visual arts or the designers that we have, come see the stars of tomorrow on the stage today. Mm -hmm. Because many of our students then go to work in professional galleries, like as, as Brian did as a former student, mm -hmm. make their way in the professional field of arts, whatever their field is. And so we're providing um, a cultural destination for mm -hmm. people here in the heart of Pennsylvania. We have, we have more, about 18% of our audiences for the Center for Performing Arts come from outside Center County. Mm -hmm. So it's a place for people to come and experience the richness of the arts in their lives. So, you know, example being here today, you can see a Penn State alum starring in Wicked on Broadway. Exactly but we would have had to see her on her way up mm -hmm. and know she was really talented right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's a good message. Exactly. How about for the two of you? Well, I think it's really exciting to, exactly what you're saying, to be able to see, and speaking of developing work, being able to get an insight into work that's being done before they go out into the world. I mean, we have, in our specific school of visual arts, I mean, a lot of graduates have gone on to do some amazing things. And it's not always just in visual arts, it's yeah. outside of that, you know, whether it's working in fashion, advertising, there's a, a bunch of different outcomes that come out of it, but you get to see these students really in their developing time, and, and they're from, you know, all over Pennsylvania and all over the tri-state area, internationally, and you're mm -hmm. getting this diversity within sort of the middle of the state, and then people go on and do some great things outside of that. And I also see that our town itself is filled with art. There's public art everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have lots of sculptures, paintings. It'd be nice to have more, wouldn't it? Oh. Worth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I also think it's, it's we, we're a research institution. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at the arts and we can look at research in the field and we can look at, I'm an art education personally. And so it becomes this idea of how we theorize about those things, how we research those things, and then how we put it back out into the world. And so when I look at my murals, for instance, I think, well, that's a published work. People engage with it. It's very rigorous. There's people, you know, people who see it every day. We get comments on it all the time. It creates a story. It creates a narrative. And so it allows me to look at things in a different way, too, by being part of the university and being oh. part of this conversation that the university has. So I think that makes it interesting because it, it adds this sort of academic part to the art it as does. well. It does. You know, and you bring up an interesting question. You expect your faculty not just to be teaching but to be practicing artists. That's true. And in fact, when you do promotion and tenure and promote someone, this is a published work, isn't it? You really right. expect um, people to be practicing, and that's how they're evaluated, not just their teaching. Is that true? That's very true. Is that critical in the, across the nation in it, terms of the success of, of art? It is. I mean, that it's important that you have faculty. Just as if, if publication is the standard by which you're assessed, obviously that's very important. 
but but it's equally important that you have somebody who's active in a, in ex exhibitions, in performance work, in their own design field, in competitions, and that sort of thing. And we're very fortunate at Penn State because Penn State understands that. Yeah. There are some research institutions that don't that quite don't, understand it, no. and so sometimes you really have to argue on why that's important and why it ranks. And in many cases, it's harder to accomplish sometimes in publication, yeah. but it's but it's very important. So, Brian, you were here in the 90s, right? Yes. And so now you get to come back as a faculty member. That must be feel really good. It feels good, and it feels for in my you know experience, it's just really comfortable because here's where I got my start, mm -hmm. and I had those faculty who were going to New York and showing, and that was really important to me. And it's not as though they were giving me some sort of roadmap on how to be successful or to do that, but mm -hmm. just the inspiration of seeing them, knowing that they're actively engaged in, in, in making work and exhibiting and, mm -hmm. and being involved, that to me was a real inspiration. So and coming, how, how different is it? Did the dean back then talk about an art district? I don't, I'm not sure I know. I think I was so busy in my studio. That well, that's not a bad <laughs> answer, you know, by the way. Yeah, I was kind you of know, like, for a student to say, hey, I was, I was focused on accomplishing, not, not the, yeah. no, those elements. Although I do remember a lot of great lectures in other departments that I would go to. One of the great things about here is there's so much going on. There's so many different genres, and you can just go experience that. Like seeing a lecture in science. I remember going to see someone who was talking about astrophysics, and you know, all that you have at your fingertips, and sometimes you just bump into it, sometimes your teachers are telling you about certain things, but it's a real diverse kind of um, group of stuff that you can do while you're here and you yeah. have access to. You know, that also brings up a, a, another interesting topic, and that, that is this whole notion of, do the arts just benefit the arts and society and well-being? I frequently think about that. What is the impact of the arts on the, on the other disciplines? And I know that's that's part of your business. And I have to tell you that when I was a geology undergraduate major, I was told whatever I saw to draw. Oh. And the professor said, you will see it more clearly if you have to draw it, and you will change your observation skills. So I know as a young geologist, art had an impact on me in a completely different field, but this is one of the things you try to accomplish, is, is yeah, that and true? Yeah, and I'm actually teaching a 303, a class that is for educators right now, and it's not for artists. And it's to mm. bring uh, art into the classrooms, into their practice, mm -hmm. and it's part of a block they do as the educators where they um, have to go through this program in the arts with us. And it's, it's really nice to see these students who aren't artists embracing the arts, seeing the benefit of the arts, becoming advocates through the arts by, you know, us introducing them to art, artists, how to create art in their classrooms, and understanding that art, it can also be a tool to learn so many other things. So, so this, you know, there are so many different facets of this. It makes it really exciting for me. A whole other facet is this, this notion of engaging students and artists as entrepreneurs. And your college was one of the first to hire an entrepreneur in resident. And when I tell people, at first they're kind of taken aback. What is, what is that? Well, why, I, why should you be more entrepreneurial? Well, among other things, and, and, and when Brian referred to the fact of, of a road map as a student, um, it's, it's important if students are going to make their living as artists once they leave, they need to understand that's an entrepreneur that's an entrepreneurial enterprise yeah. to, to make your way as an artist. And so it's very important that you understand some, some about that role. And it is actually, again, that's something we're seeing across the nation in many art schools because it's becoming increasingly important so that students can make a living as artists, that they also can think about what else they can do and understand that, that entrepreneurial spirit is creativity at mm -hmm. the root. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we bring something to the table as artists in the way we process information and the way we focus on process as much as product mm -hmm. becomes very important. And that's the other thing I think that's nice about this community. Uh, I think it helps encourage entrepreneurship in the mm -hmm. arts and doing different things. And it's with the Fraser Street Gallery, and we're having very good conversations right now uh, with the downtown area about how we can work with students to create businesses, to mm -hmm. run galleries, to do things. I picked up the Khalid Daily Collegian today. I'm, I, I wear with great pride this 
this approach because a student made this for me my first year here an art student made mm -hmm. this for me and I picked up the Daily Collegian today and one of our architecture students has started a jewelry making business in town opened up her own business and there it is there it is yeah. that's, that's what it's all about <laughs> you know I, I hate to sound like I'm pushing this the arts and intersecting with all our all parts of society but I was very fortunate as a graduate student to be a, a guest of the Soviet Academy of Sciences in the 70s. And so I got to see the art in the Kremlin, and I got to see the art at the Pushkin, which picked a particular time period, and then the Tretyakov that goes all the way back to religious icons. And I convinced myself that art and politics go hand in hand, and that you could see what that country went through based on the arts. And I understand you've done some work in Czechoslovakia very much on this topic about whether or not the revolution that occurred there actually arts had mm -hmm. had a role to play. Mm -hmm. What was that role? I, well, it, it was a major role. Uh, I just returned from Prague actually night before last. Really? <laughs> <about> midnight, yes. <laughs> and I was there interviewing several different folks. I was there with a political science uh, colleague from the University of Florida and we were talking about this very juncture. We interviewed many faculty both in political science at Charles University, at the leading academy there, uh, Fine Arts. We were at several contemporary museums but I also had the great privilege of interviewing Michael Zantowski who was Václav Havel's spokesperson and then hmm. became the Czech ambassador hmm. to the U.S. and Israel and Ukraine. Okay. He now runs the Václav Havel Library in Prague. And all of them talked about the important role that the arts played in the dissident move, movement during the 60s mm -hmm. and, of course, during the period of normalization in the 70s. And in the 70s, when everything really shut down and the Czechoslovakian Communist Party was one of the strictest, eased up a little bit in the 80s and the artists moved in. And, and one of the things that Václav Havel was so strong on was that, that he of course was a playwright, a dissident playwright, but he talked about we have to stand up for the rock musicians who were being persecuted and put in jail because we have to stand up for everybody's rights. And that he became the key leader. All of these different factions, as they were moving through the Velvet Revolution, everybody saw how he was able to relate to all the diverse groups which could have splintered. And Czechoslovakia became one of the few that went through that revolution or evolution without bloodshed mm. that happened in many of the communist countries. Mm. So it was central. And it's still there. You find, you find uh, uh, artists today are still focused on using art to make social change. And it's such a rich arts community because of that. So we put arts into action and it crosses all of these different elements. And one of the examples of arts in action is, is blood, in, blood at the Root. Maybe we could just look at a quick video clip. We will not, we will not be moved. We will not, we will not be moved. Blood at the Root makes a difference by starting conversation. We will not be moved. A conversation about race, about gender, about class, challenging people to think differently. We will not be moved. Please welcome the recipient of the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival Hip Hop Theater Creator Award, Blood at the Root. About 40 years ago, Martin Luther had a dream, huh? Dream, huh? And damn sure ain't the same dream we dream, huh? I guess they You believe all that happened yesterday? About that tree. Policemen come up and tell us to get out of there like we was criminals or something. I saw it, it was like 10 of y'all. Looked like something out of civil rights or something. Felt like it too. Only thing missing was the dogs chasing us. You seem unnecessary, ask me. They, they ain't gotta do all that. Just let folk be where they wanna be. Do what they wanna do. Ain't gotta be all that police and DA and none of that. You come to this school at a crazy time. Mm. Or oh, maybe you're right on time. I ain't show yet. I heard they got in a fight at practice the other day. I heard Coach found out one of them boys on that team was a faggot. <gasps> mm -hmm. They ain't supposed to call them that. It's racist. It ain't racist to say faggot. Well, it's something you ain't supposed to say. It. I heard Coach had a shut down practice the other day to deal with Homosexual? You ain't supposed to say that either. You ain't supposed to say homosexual? Still sound offensive. Everything's offensive now. Then the black boys... You ain't supposed to say that neither. What am I supposed to call them? African black. African American. <laughs> Just call me black. So then the black boy ended up bumping into the white boy. Can you still say what? What else you gonna say? Just American? 
We, we all Americans! I always try to remind them that it doesn't get much better than what they're doing right now. No matter what level they get to, it doesn't get much better than doing something that you care about and you believe in um, and that you are creating out of on your own. It's, this is living proof of what's, what happens if you really truly believe in, your, in yourself and your dreams. And I know that's cliche, but I'm, like I said, I'm a country boy. I'm, I'm <laughs> I come from nothing, I, you know, I'm, I'm living my dream. Today can't be like no other day. Today gotta count for something. Something that went just from a, let's try some workshops, to now winning awards at the Kennedy Center, you know, traveling the world with a show that I can, I can fully stand behind and that I feel fulfilled as an artist doing and finding it at 21 is unreal and also scary because I don't know when I'm gonna have an opportunity like this again. You know, it's not, it's not every day that you come across a, a project that you believe in wholeheartedly and will take you across the world. So just in a couple of words, what did, from each of your perspectives, what did you just see? I saw research in the arts in action. Inspiring creativity. Uh, definitely outreach into the community and Penn State students going further with their education. Dreams taking flight. Great story. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up on Higher Education in Focus, student reporter Lauren Doyle, a double major in broadcast journalism and theater with a dance concentration, talks one-on-one -on -one with President Barron about the arts at Penn State. There's so much going on with the arts at Penn State right now. The question is funding. How do we get it? Uh, it can be very difficult coming from the state. And I'm wondering if there are other programs such as Thespian Society or National Endowment for the Arts that help Penn State fund their academic programs. So there are. Mm -hmm. You think about some support academically from the state, some support from tuition, some from ticket sales. Um, arts and architecture also attracts about a million to a million and a half from uh, different sources, so through, through grants and, and, um, and other efforts, and also a number of foundations, extremely valuable, contribute on the order of 20 different foundations. Not a large amount of money. This last year, about $100,000 so far. But every single penny of it you really want to put to good use, and it's incredibly valuable. Oh, absolutely. Uh, another question I have is how does Penn State, how would you compare Penn State's investment in their arts programs compared to that of the other Big Ten schools? You know, I tend to think about the outcomes for the investment that you make. And Penn State ranks highly uh, in the Big Ten. You always look at it that in, in some areas you're really strong and in other areas you're good and in other areas you're good and aspiring to be I even better. Maybe in all areas you're, you're do doing that way. So the programs have different strengths, but this is a very fine program in the arts here. Mm -hmm. And one of um, Penn State's strongest art programs is musical theater program. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of alumni on Broadway right now and national tours. And my question goes into their athletics. A lot of the competitive athletes here, football, basketball players, get a lot of free consultations from nutritionists, uh, team doctors, all of those things. But the musical theater majors and the dance majors don't seem to receive any of that. Why does the university not provide similar supports for these artists who are also athletic? Yeah, you probably would step back and say, I'm not sure society has all their priorities in the right order. But the simple fact of the matter is athletics pays for itself. The big ticket item sports even cover the other sports. So when you look at all of those scholarships and nutritionists and, and all those different elements and the mentoring, that actually comes from ticket sales and endowments, not from the state. At Penn State, we're one of those few institutions where money from the university doesn't cross over to support athletics. Mm -hmm. And so this is quite an advantage when you can fill a stadium with 100,000 people and collect that amount per ticket and help reinvest it in that particular activity. Mm. It'd be nice to have that same desire and love across this country for the arts to be able to 
provide that level of support. Absolutely. And another question is in terms of students and their individual studies, they can be very expensive for art supplies, yeah. for showcases. I know the graphic design majors have uh, print bills due at the mm -hmm. end of the semester, but their programs don't reimburse them for it. What, if anything, can the administration do to help students afford these costly, necessary things for their majors? Yeah, it's, it's a big challenge. If you look, the state support for Pennsylvania per student is lower than any of the top 30 publics in the country. It's a tuition-driven university. That's why it's a little bit more expensive tuition in state. That means you pay for everything, essentially, that the state doesn't provide. And so it's really hard, and we end up with having all these fees that support majors because it's not coming out of the tuition bill. I wish it was different. Mm -hmm. It can be really tough. Uh, we don't have that much time, but in a few sentences or less, the arts can be very competitive and can yeah. be very difficult to maintain friendships. And I know you talk a lot about, you know, building that community at Penn State. So yeah. how could you c help continue that where the competition for athletics, I'm, I'm sorry, for academics arts, can yeah. be so personal. Yeah, you know, sometimes that's true in medicine, sometimes it's true in law and in the art, and you really just have to have an institutional culture where we support each other, mm -hmm. but also celebrate excellence. Wonderful, thank you so much. My pleasure. On behalf of Penn State President Dr. Eric Barron and student reporter Lauren Doyle, we'd like to thank our guests Barbara Corner, Brian Alfred, and Natalia Pilato. I'm Patty Satalia. From all of us here at WPSU, thanks for joining us for this edition of Higher Education in Focus. Support for Higher Education in Focus comes from the Penn State Alumni Association, serving alumni and alma mater for more than 145 years on the web at alumni.psu.edu. Penn State Bookstore, now in an expanded location in the Hub Robeson Center. Improving the student experience at Penn State with philanthropic support of student causes throughout the university. PSECU, a credit union providing financial services to its members throughout Pennsylvania since 1934. More at psecu.com. And from viewers like you, Thank you.